What's up guys, welcome to yet another very excited video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Suleiman. I'm making photo and video gear review as well as tutorial. If you return subscriber, thank you so much for visiting my channel once again. Before everything, first let me show you guys some awesome camera movement that we will achieve in this video with this budget camera slider. I hope you enjoy the shots and camera movement. Just to make it clear, I didn't use any motion control system like Edelkron Jib 1 or any robotic arm and neither I use any prop lens in this video. So stay with me till end of this video because in this video I will show you guys behind the scene tips and tricks and how I achieve all those amazing camera movement you just saw without any expensive gear. Thanks to guys on YC Onion for sending me uh, this awesome hot dog tree motorized camera slider. I don't want to talk a lot about YC Onion Hot Dog 3 motorized camera slider because I want you guys to see it in action. If you want to know more about this slider, I will put a link in the description of this video where you can find all the technical specification of this slider. This is a very strong one axis motorized camera slider, but it has an option to pan left and right. There are lots of slider with such mechanism in the market. I mean a rod in the middle to pan the camera left and right, especially if you want to slide your camera and also track your subject. The rod in the middle is kind of bendable that can help you to keep properly tracked your subject, which is not possible with other slider in the market because they have a very stiff rod and not very good for tracking a subject, especially if you're close up or product tracking. The advantage of this little flexibility is that you can really keep your subject in proper framing. But the main winning point of this slider is that you can pair it with your current gimbal so you can mount your gimbal on this slider and it become a 3-axis motorized camera slider. For gimbal compatibility, I will put a link in the description of this video so you can go and check if your gimbal is compatible with this slider or not. To be honest, this budget camera slider can do more than what you may think about it. I know mostly people are using slider for some very simple shot like dolly in, dolly out, or sliding left and right, which I agree these kind of shot at lots of value to your video as compared to static shots. Sliding left and right with a tracking option is giving a parallax movement, but most of budget slider cannot track properly. But this one, it's tracking the subject properly. Let me show you guys an example of how it's tracking accurately, which I was not expecting. It's all because of this rod. I will divide this video into five different sections. The first one will be sliding left and right plus tracking. The second one will be dolly in and dolly out without any limitation. Third one will be overhead sliding shot plus tracking. Number fourth will be inclined vertical position plus tracking. Number fifth will be vertical sliding shot plus tracking. Number six will be faking robotic arm and problem. Most of the shots which we will achieve in this video are not possible by mounting a slider on a tripod. That's why I built this awesome rolling slider rig. I built this on a rolling stand and it's very strong and you will see it in action. Sliding left and right and tracking this section is the only section we will be using tripod with our slider and remaining section we are not going to use any tripod with our slider. All the shots will be done with our rolling stand uh, slider rig which I show you before. Anyways, let's start show you guys how to accurately track your subject while sliding left and right. Sliding and tracking is not something new. It's very common function in almost all slider, whether they are very expensive or budget slider. But the problem in budget sliders are that when you sliding left and right, and you cannot properly track your subject. I tried lots of uh, budget slider, uh, those two axis slider or one axis slider with this kind of rod mechanism. All of them fail on properly track the subject when 
sliding left and right. Mostly they're okay and working fine if you sliding like left and right and tracking a huge uh, object like a car or a building or a person from far away. But in this kind of scenario on a close up shot or like product shot, it's not easy. They are failing on tracking the subject while sliding. The first thing you have to do is first uh, select your subject. For demonstration of this video, I put a small object, it's a small light stand, and I just put two uh, random boxes to show you the parallax movement. Right now, make sure uh, your slider is centered to your subject. Right now, my camera is on a center. I attach my camera on a ball head and there's a small knob in this ball head, the reason because it's easy for me to pan left and right. Now, the first thing you have to do is to make your camera in a center of slider, move the slider in a center, lock your center, move to point A. Once you reach point A, then you can again change the angle of the camera. Okay, right now, now we are in point A losing two knobs in moving this rod and put your subject in center. Right now it's in center. I'm locking this side. Coming back to center of the slider and center, I have to make sure that still we are in center. If it's not center, you have to move it a little bit. Right now I just lose the knob. I'm uh, moving my camera angle. Uh, not from slider with the help of the small ball head now it's center now I'm going back to my point a But still I didn't mark my point a this will be my point a I'm marking it as a point a now moving all the way to another side of the slider Once we reach point B we can see it's not center here is the trick because of this a little flexibility This side is even locked, but still we can make small adjustment other side now I'm moving it a little bit making my framing in center now I'm marking my point B and now let's track it so here's the result of this tracking you can judge it yourself stay with me till end of this video because in other section we will cover lots of other amazing uh, possibilities that we can achieve with this slide Dolly in and dolly out without any limitation. If you have seen one of the shots in start of this video, there was a shot where the camera was like flying over uh, this laptop. So that is a dolly in without any limitation. Right now, if I want to dolly in uh, this camera, I can dolly in, but there's a limitation. Camera cannot go further away from this point because this is the last point. But if I want to move the slider, put it here, still there's a barrier that this uh, camera cannot go more here uh, so for this kind of shots we have to see how i am achieving uh, this shot which the camera is almost like flying over so let's achieve this shot this is my setup right now i'm ready to slide in all the way without any limitation before that let me tell you guys that this is YC Onion Hot Dog 3. It's 120 centimeter, a very long slider. And believe me, it's very strong. These rollers at the top, they are very strong that this can support. If you put a camera up to eight kilo, it's easily supporting up to eight kilo. So your camera will not fall down. So this way, let me show you guys how we can uh, slide in all the way, the full length of the slider, which is 120 centimeter. We can slide it in like before there was limitation but now we can slide in without any problem as if you can see the camera is rolling over the laptop it's like the camera is flying over the laptop without any problem without any limitation so now i can easily take advantage of the full length of this slider and i can dolly out the same way without any problem without any limitation one more thing uh, it didn't mean that you should have the same gears to rig this slider. You can come up with your own ideas. The only tip which I'm giving you is that it should be upside down. You can also mount a slider upside down on two light stand, one light stand on this end and one in this end. 
but the only problem will be this light stand will be visible to the camera but with this setup there's nothing here it's not coming in my shot even because i extend the camera a little more down this is it's called flex tilt held by edelkron you can use anything to extend a little bit more your camera in order to not get uh, the front uh, side of the slider in your shot this way you can achieve amazing shots stay with me we will move to the next section in this section i will show you guys how i mount my yc onion slider that i can achieve a really nice overhead sliding shot also overhead sliding with tracking so overhead shot or basically those very nice uh, top angle views you might have seen in lots of video uh, in unboxing video product video if it's a cooking video overhead shots are basically a uh, top angle views like you have to uh, mount your camera this way on a tripod c stand light stand boom arm there are lots of ways to mount your camera for overhead shot but having an overhead sliding shot it's not easy it's complicated even when we are adding tracking to our overhead sliding shot so stay with me in this section i will show you how i'm achieving very nice smooth overhead sliding shot with tracking in previous section uh, and dolly and dolly out you saw that i mount my slider this way for dolly and and dolly out but i made some changes for overhead sliding shot uh, not because of overhead sliding shot because of the tracking because if you mount your slider this way which for uh, overhead shot it's easy to mount it on two light stands because the camera will be this way uh, so the light stands will not be visible on your uh, camera frame but the only problem with this orientation is that you will not be able to track the subject while you uh, sliding your camera so that's why what I did I move my slider to 90 degree so in this way I can track my subject while I'm sliding so let me show you how I achieve this so first let me show you guys how I make the changes as you can see here it gives a ball head I completely uh, change the whole slider setup to 90 degree keep in mind that uh, for attaching your camera to this orientation I mean a 90 degree uh, setup of the slider you need to have a cage uh, the reason you need to have a cage because I don't want to put my camera this way because I want to move the camera this way it should slide this way so that's why uh, I have to attach from side of the camera here let me attach my camera here okay as you can see here it's moving perfectly right now i'm selecting my point a the camera is moving to point a now here is i think this is the perfect spot i will stop here select my point a then coming back to this way and will select my point b once i select my point b let's see how was the shot and then we will jump into overhead sliding while track overhead sliding and tracking shot it's the same technique uh, to properly track the subject while tracking which I show you in first section which was sliding left and right with tracking the first thing you have to go to point A make the adjustment and then you have to come to center then you have to come to point B and make the adjustment again keep your subject the subject which you are tracking in center and let's see how is the result okay yeah, I think it's uh, tracking perfectly. If you spend more time on this, you can achieve much better result while sliding in tracking uh, subject. Incline sliding shot. This is the typical way people are using their slider for incline shot. Uh, it's commonly used for revealing an object or a place. We cannot do too much in this uh, position. This is the way people are shooting it. Uh, just for testing, I put a KNF uh, ND filter box here. 
to show you guys what we can achieve with this setup but this section is not about this type of shot that's why i want to show you guys entirely different way how to achieve very nice incline sliding shot as well as tracking i mean incline sliding shot and tracking at the same time when the camera is moving in incline position we can track the subject and we can achieve some very nice and creative shots so let me change the setup then we will continue the section i made some modification to my rig as you can see now the only difference is that i put it in inclined position main changes which i make is i remove this rod from here and attach it here because now it's more stable uh, with having the same rod here uh, because there's too much weight moving uh, on a slider especially in this position it's really throwing off the balance of the slider and it was rotating because the ball head which is attached is not strong enough to uh, hold the weight shift now it's time to attach the camera the same procedure apply here we have to attach camera from one side i attach the camera and one more important thing in this setup is that slider should be aligned straight like it should not be like this because when you framing your subject the shot will move out of frame or there will be a change in tilt of the camera so that's why it's very important to keep in mind that it should be leveled properly first i will go to my end position because it's very important because the shot which i want to achieve is that the camera when it's reaching the end point the product should be completely below the camera is not uh, looking completely down so i have to make a little bit changes this way and i have another monitor here which i will turn on my grid this way it's easy for me to properly put my subject in center of my frame now i will go back to down uh, so far it's uh, perfect okay now here is the middle part one more thing before it's come down i just want to put this here because as soon as it reach this position i don't want the box should be in a frame okay so i think it's better to be here now it's not in frame now that's it there's one more thing because uh, this box has some reflective uh, gold colors that's why i have this uh, small led light which i will attach it at the bottom of the camera i don't need to brighten it too much i just need just a little bit of light okay this is my point a now i'm just going back again everything is in frame now uh, i have to mark my point a and point b uh, still the horizon line and start it's a little bit off but we can fix it in editing it's not a big deal so this is my point a now i'm going to my point b now it's an 80 percent uh, sliding speed once it finished and it came back maybe remove this box and shoot one more time with box and then mix it in post in case if i'm getting some focus problem it's better to have an extra footage so i will remove this and go back to 80 percent so uh the reason i took two shots one with the box and one without the box is that in case if uh, there's some focus problem so i will have an extra footage of only the leather case itself but maybe i will not use it because here i don't need this light i will remove the light i will shoot this in apc mode i still uh, in this mode i need to make this much more tighter i'm not sure because i cannot see it when it's moving there is some movement when the slider is going up and down there's still some movement or not it's uh, perfect for this kind of shot but if you want some motion control then it's not possible because in motion control all the shots should be at the same framing timing so that you can easily overlap them but uh, just for testing i will see if it's working or not okay this is the first shot i will repeat the shot several times and then i will change the position of the powder and then i will mix it in post if you guys have any questions regarding this setup or this section please write on the comments below till now 
I will show you guys the footage and we will go to the next section. In this section, I will show you how I'm achieving those nice vertical sliding shots with tracking. As I said before, with YC Onion, we can easily track our subject. We are not missing the tracking, so it's tracking accurately. And I already show you guys how to properly track the subject while you are sliding. All right, now this is my setup, which I already changed. I remove the longer slider. This is, I think they're 60 centimeter or, or 80 centimeter. You can use any size as you want. Uh, the good thing about this setup is that uh, I don't need uh, too much distance when I'm tracking vertically. So here is a product which I already put on a table. I want to show you guys how I'm uh, achieving some of the shots and I will show you behind the scene. For tracking, if you think that you cannot track properly, you have to go back watch uh, section first where I show you guys how to properly uh, track your subject while you are sliding. For this setup, I'm using uh, Viltrox 50mm 1.8 because it's giving that nice depth of field. I'm shooting in F1. This is my point A and then I will move to my point B. Before going to my point B, as you can see that uh, the subject is in center of the frame. Then I will move to point B, mark my point B, then I will run one or two times the full slide. This will be my point B. Right now it's uh, tracking downward and sliding downward. At the same time, it's tracking the subject is, as you can see, it's uh, panning. The camera is panning, panning up and down uh, and uh, the subject is in frame. Everything looks uh, perfect. I'm always recommending to shoot in lower speed because you can increase the speed in editing, but it's very difficult to reduce the speed in editing, especially if you're shooting in uh, 25 or 30 frames per second. So right now it's in normal sliding mode. It's sliding vertically uh, without tracking the subject. Camera angle is not changing. It's going straight up and straight down. With my rolling stand, the good thing is that I can easily change the height of the whole slider. Right now I want to slide it from here. Uh, some close-up shot. So this is uh, the whole setup. Uh, this is uh, my rolling stand, the same stand which I use in uh, other orientation. So the good thing about this rolling stand is that it has two grip and I'm using one of the grip for the small slider. I can easily change the height of this slider without any modification to the legs and everything so that's a very easy i will shoot some other products and you can see behind the scene in end result to fake problems uh, there are certain things that we have to keep in mind because prop lens is like a barrel, it has a very a small diameter, the lens itself. That's why it can easily go through oh, lots of small or narrow places. And another thing is that it has a very minimum focus distance. So that's why I will be using my Sony a7C uh, with Sigma 1624 mm because this lens has very uh, minimum focus distance. It's very good like a macro lens. And for camera, I'm using Sony a7C. I'm not using Sony a7S III or my Sony a7 III because they are a little bulkier. If you have Sony a7C, I will highly recommend to use Sony a7C. If you have other cameras, try to use it on reverse mode. If you are using it on normal mode, uh, the gap between the sensor from the bottom is a little bit uh, more than the top. Uh, especially in Sony a If you're using any other full frame camera, then you can use it in normal position. For my setup, I'm using Sony A7C in reverse mode because this way it's almost flat. And the second thing is that uh, I have to extend my camera uh, from the slider because this is a very wide lens. I don't want the slider 
cam in my frame so that's why i have to extend this a little more for extending it i will be using the selfie stick to extend um, the distance from the camera to the slider so uh, the slider should not be in the frame so let's start shooting some product and uh, faking a problem Faking a robotic arm, uh, in this section we are trying to fake some sort of robotic arm. I know it's not easy to fake a robotic arm because robotic arm are very expensive equipment, quarter million and a million uh, US dollars the price. But anyways, but we are trying to achieve in this video uh, that how we can mimic the movement of robotic arm. The winning point of a YC Union hot dog slider is that we can interlink it with our gimbal. Right now I connect it with my uh, Gion Webel S gimbal. The reason I'm using this gimbal because it's lightweight. I don't want to put lots of weight on my this stand because uh, I don't like to fall it down. Anyways, um, the gimbal is connected. There are two ways we can achieve this. Uh, if you have a gimbal which is compatible with YC Union hot dog slider then you can interlink it if your gimbal is not compatible with yc union hot dog 3 slider or even if it's compatible the, another alternative option which i recommended as compared to interlink system because an interlink system you will not get a very accurate uh, camera movement but uh, what i'm highly recommending is to try to use your uh, gimbal tracking option like in uh, dji they have uh, river and eye and some other sort of tracking system in Webelis, they have a transmission module. You can connect the transmission module to your Webelis gimbal, then you can easily track the subject. This way, it's much better, and I like it uh, as compared to interlink system, but still, interlink system has its own uh, benefit. Uh, this way, it's very easy, and it's not taking too much time, but still, it depends on which kind of shot you're looking for. Now I just uh, put it a little bigger object like I had two boxes and I want to chuck the top right corner of the top box. So this was our uh, faking robotic arm. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and learned something. If you guys have any questions regarding this section or this setup, please write on the comments below. If you guys have any suggestion about this setup or which kind of uh, shot you are uh, taking with your slider, I will be happy to share the links in the comments of this video. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are not subscribed to my channel yet, I will highly appreciate your subscription like the video and press the bell notification in order to be notified on my upcoming videos. See you guys till next video.